I had a conversation with a group of guys in the mastermind that I'm in yesterday talking about things like comparison and being the word is really attached, like attached to certain structures, attached to certain ways of doing things and always being in a state of comparison. Very, very, very common. Yeah, a lot of this does stem from the type of content that's out there as well. You know, that you're constantly being reinforced that like if you're not doing X amount of inputs every day, then you're never going to be successful. And it's just like, where does that belief even come from? And why am I choosing to like engage with this belief? Because the interesting thing about this is that our beliefs shape how we view and experience the world around us. So for example, if we believe that everything has to be hard, everything has to be difficult, everything has to be really, really complicated, then what do you think you're going to experience? Everything's really hard. Everything's really complicated. Everything's really complex. And we, we, for example, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll watch a YouTube video and they'll be telling us how hard life is, how hard business is. And that if we don't do all of these inputs and you don't start work at 5 a.m., then you're not going to be successful. And now we adopt that belief because it comes from an influence. It comes from an authority figure that we see as successful. So therefore we adopt their way of thinking. So now we have adopted the belief that is now shaping a reality around us that's making life very, very difficult for us. And we don't even know why, because we believe this person has the answer. But the answer, you already know it. You already have it within you. So what we're looking to do with, when it comes to internal mastery, when it comes to mastering your energy performance, we'll touch on a couple of different things in a second there, but we're, we're releasing the attachment to needing things to be a certain way and surrendering to what we are most excited to do in each and every moment, right? Which goes against a lot of business advice out there because there's a lot of advice that will say that you need to do this, this, and this in the morning and you need to jump into work straight away and you have to have this amount of hours done every single day. If that serves you, do it. If that's like, if that serves you and you get excited about that, you like that way of operating, it brings you results and it feels in alignment, 100%. Go ahead and do that. But I just know for 70% of people who consume that type of content, it doesn't work for them because we're all wired differently. For example, are you familiar with Sam Ovens? Back in his the consulting days, very rigid. Like his way of thinking was very systems oriented. Everything is a system. Life is a system. But the amount of people who went through Consulting Accelerator to replicate how Sam operated and just did terribly, terribly wrong for themselves because they weren't, they can't, they don't operate like that. Right. They're, yeah. they're more fluid. They're more creative. They're more, they don't like structure. They, they go off and they do things randomly and they still get great results. So it's always about finding what is your rhythm and not being attached to any singular or singular way of doing things. Because the more we get attached to things, the more that we outsource our own self-worth uh, to something outside of ourselves, which means that we'll never be able to truly feel powerful. We'll never be truly be able to feel authentic because of this. Yeah outside influence that doesn't even know that we really exist and we're giving it all of our power so yeah. that's the first thing like releasing those attachments and surrendering to the to the process is going to be a big part of that the attachment to things it's it's almost really when we look at it from a high level perspective it's the conditional love right it's conditional love i can only feel love within myself i can only feel full within myself when this thing outside of me is either true or, or false that's that's what determines it so the question then becomes, well, how can I unconditionally love myself in the moments where I feel like I shouldn't, or I feel like I don't, I feel like I'm not worthy of that. That's what really the question becomes. And the more that we can dive into that in those dense moments where we do feel that trigger, or we do feel like that comparison where we have a great bit day in business, but it's still not compared to what, where other people are. How can we love ourselves in those moments and reflect on the journey that you've actually, that you've actually been on for the last number of years? And understanding that when we see somebody else online, we're seeing a snippet of their life. We're seeing 0.5% of the whole entire picture. We're not seeing all the failures. We're not seeing their family life. We're not seeing their relationships. We're not seeing anything other than that win or that goal or that outcome that they have achieved. So when we can bring ourselves back in those moments and switch the perspective to see, okay, well, what is, what are, what is actually the benefits that are coming from this comparison that I'm experiencing, which may be a weird question. Like, what are the benefits that I'm actually receiving in this moment of comparison? There's, a, there's actually a lot of benefits. You just have to look for them. And the interesting th thing about this is that when you mentioned comparison, right, really what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to a, a stage of 
yeah, we may see people online, but can we actually sit and see people, other people's success and congratulate them and have gratitude for, for them and their experience and, and, and the things that they're achieving? And uh, because when we truly learn to love ourselves in those moments, we can look at someone else's success and not feel a comparison. We can just feel joy for them because their journey is completely different to ours. And when we see things that way, we don't necessarily need to, we can remove social media just because we, we want to be less distracted in general anyway, but we never want to be avoiding things just for the avoidance of being triggered because that's avoiding the actual deeper work of really learning to love yourself in those, in those moments. Right? So having gratitude for yourself and the journey that you've been on and how unique that is to you and your specific journey through this life experience. Right. And then seeing other people's success or other people's achievements and just looking at that and being like, okay, this is amazing. This is so amazing that this person achieved this thing. You know, it's, it's an inspiration for me. It's an inspiration for many other people. Awesome. Move on, you know, on to the next thing. Coming back to the benefits of this as well. There's always a lesson in these things, man, when it comes to, comparison specifically but just anything in life in general when you start to see everything as a growth opportunity and you start to see them as okay well what is this trigger that i may be experiencing right now this comparison this emotion that i'm feeling what is the what's the lesson here like what's the growth opportunity you know for example it's like you get triggered by someone else where you're looking at them online and and uh, you're seeing the success but it's making you feel um inferior to this person in comparison well, what is that teaching you, right? And for this example, you've mentioned, okay, that was tied to something in childhood. Well, that's a key insight. That's a key area of growth for you. That's a breakthrough. So how can we continue to go down that rabbit hole and see like, okay, is what, what else is there that I can dive into that is this going to teach me or what, or what is this going to teach me? So there's always an opportunity for growth, man. And that's, I just wanted to share that with you just so that perspective is there at the back of your mind. Because sometimes we need to be reminded because in those yeah. moments of density and those challenges, we can really feel like, okay, this is something I want to avoid. I want to push it away. I want to you know, delete social media and get, get away from it as, mo as much as possible. But true power can really come in the form of just sitting with those dense emotions and sitting with those things that feel very uncomfortable at those times and being able to actually sit in it from a place of power and choosing to elevate in those moments. The way that personal growth is portrayed in the online space when it comes to content specifically, um, our, our mind does this. Our mind thinks that, thinks that there's steps to take and we need to add things and we need to get to certain levels. And that is true to a degree, but what we're really doing is removing things along the way. Like all we're doing is removing, but the, the personal development industry in itself has caused a lot of complexity in general because it's, it starts to add more things to the process, thinking that I'm here, my authentic self is all the way over there and I need to uh, gather resources and I need to gather things and courses and mentors and all these things, which are helpful to a degree. But all of those things are only helpful if they, if they force you to go inwards within yourself to realize that you're already here. But the logical mind will always tell you that it's somewhere and it needs and there has to be steps and it has to be complex and it has to be hard because the ego's core purpose in our lives is to stay relevant. And the journey of personal growth, of spiritual growth or whatever it is that you believe in is dissolving that need to be anything. The idea of the self in general is a, is a construct of the mind. This is why this is why the words that we use are so are so interesting, because even the 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 idea of becoming a new version it's not necessarily correct it's more like we are becoming more of who we truly are but to do that we need to go around the path to understand that we were already here the whole time